the Oscars are tonight, which means it is time for my annual humiliation that is my Oscars predictions video. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel every week and the movie reviews here at the weekend. All of my movie reviews are spoiler free and in addition to a playlist of my recent reviews, Firstly, I will leave my Oscars 2023 playlist linked up above because I do have full reviews of some of the films that I'm going to talk about today. Here's how the video is going to work. I will talk about my best picture predictions, first of all, discussing each best picture nomination and then give you my predictions. And then if you want to stick around to hear about other categories, um, then uh, feel free to do so because I will discuss those in the rest of the video. I will not be talking, unfortunately, about um, documentary, any of the shorts or the... Um, international picture because I just have not managed to access enough of those to talk about the category in great depth. So I have seen all of the Best Picture nominations. Um, all Quiet on the Western Front is a remake of the original. It is a World War One movie. I just am not a fan in any way, shape or form of a war movie. Now, 1917 that was nominated a couple of years ago, I did enjoy that one. I enjoyed that like single camera shot. It felt really intense. It felt like reading a novel. And so that's why I enjoyed it. However, All Quiet on the Western Front um, on Netflix is... <sighs> It's the fact, I think, that it's a dubbed version and so it does take away from the kind of tension a little bit because you're like, hmm, what's this dubbing going on here? Um, and I know it's been nominated for loads of different things and I know that it's like, you know, a big important feature and things, but just, just not for me. And I think I really struggled to get past my own enjoyment of it to be able to kind of see any of the kind of beauty in the filmmaking um, and so really struggled with that one. Then we have Avatar The Way of Water. Now I was not a fan of Avatar and I have talked on this channel previously about how I really struggled to go and watch this one because it was so long. So this wasn't one that I could ever watch after work because by the time I get there, it's like seven o'clock at night. The film wasn't going to finish until about 11. I get up at half five. I've then got to drive half an hour to get home. Not happening. Um, so I ended up watching this one um, on a random Saturday afternoon. It basically took up my whole Saturday. I didn't go and see it in an enhanced format because I just wasn't willing to pay that extra to go and see something I knew I probably wouldn't enjoy that much. Um, however, I do feel like the special effects of this film, I know I will go on to talk about that category, but the special effects of this film were stunning. Um, like, visually it is very pleasing and if I hadn't had to pay extra for it I probably would have gone to see it in IMAX because it was just really nice I know there's I was looking at someone's post on Reddit saying you know will it come back to IMAX and I think it's something that they probably would re-release in IMAX at some point when there's a bit of a a lull in in the big IMAX films um and I may take the opportunity to go and see it, even if I knew I wasn't going to stay till the end. Um, should it have been nominated for Best Picture? I don't think so. I think that the only reason it's been nominated for Best Picture is because of the, like, James Cameron previous Avatar record-breaking stuff. Um, and, yeah, I, I saw it, what, like, at least two months after it was released, if not two and a half months after it was released, and it was still kind of going strong. It's still showing now, and it was released at the beginning of the Christmas holidays. So there we go. Now, The Banshees of In Inishirin. I really wanted to go and see this one in the cinema, but it just was over way too quickly in the cinema for me to be able to fit it in. Um, and so didn't end up managing to see it in the cinema. So I did watch this one on Disney+. Plus. I really liked the look of it from the trailers, from the description. I was all set to go and see it in the cinema. Um, and then I watched it on Disney Plus and I just really didn't like it. It was just like too slow and too sedate for me. It felt very like this has been made as like an Oscar nominated film for me. Um, 
And I, this was me going in really wanting to like it, kind of like the opposite of Avatar, me going in like thinking I'm not going to enjoy this and enjoying it way more than I thought I would. I really struggled to even finish the film, a bit like All Quiet on the Western Front. And I know that, again, it's an important film for like, like um, kind of Irish cinema and British cinema. And I just, oh, like all of, yeah... I struggle with the fact that I didn't like it because I really wanted to like it. And again, it's got like acting nomination and I just don't get it. Um, and that again is a very like personal thing. Um, and so I, again, kind of, I haven't made a full review of this one, even though I watched it because I was like, I don't really have anything to say about it. I didn't like it and that's the end of it. Like, um, then we have Elvis, which I loved and I put as one of my like top 10 films of 2022 because I did absolutely love it I think it would have been magical to be able to watch this one in Dolby like I wish I still had a cinema that had a Dolby screen anywhere near me I just can't access one where I'm currently living um and you know I imagine if this one had come out when I was living in Denver I would have gone to see it in Dolby and gone to see it in IMAX and gone to see it again in regular because I did really enjoy it so much I thought that the acting was spectacular I thought that the storyline was great and even though it as well as the other films I've talked about is on the longer side it didn't seem like a super long film to me um I'll leave my standalone review of that one linked up above because I did make a full review of it and I really enjoyed it and I think it fully deserves the Oscar nomination now the next one is like the darling of award seasons right now everybody's kind of talking about it and it's another one that even though I love a film about multiverses, hello Marvel, um, really struggled with and it's everything everywhere all at once and again I haven't made a full review of it because I really struggled to get through it. I really couldn't gel with it and it's one that I kind of wish I'd seen at the cinema and not just waited to watch at home. But again, it just went by too quickly for me to be able to fit it in. There's sometimes when I just can't fit everything in that I want to watch. And then at the minute, there's just nothing that I want to watch at the cinema. So, um, yeah, everything everywhere all at once. I just, again, personally really didn't like it. However, it didn't kind of stop me from seeing that the kind of the special effects and the acting and the writing, I thought was really interesting as well. I really wanted to like it, a bit like the Banshees, um, but just couldn't, it just didn't sit well with me when I was watching it. I just felt like I might, I would rather be spending my time doing other things. And so, yeah, however, it is very much the Oscar darling at the minute. And so in terms of that, well, the award season darling at the minute. And so in terms of predictions, I think it is a strong contender. Then we have The Fablemans, which I absolutely adored. I think it's just delightful. I'll leave my standalone review linked above. Um, I really, really loved it. And I just love the fact that it's like a film about films. And I just think that those are some of my favourite kind of films because you can tell that it's been made in a really like loving and respectful way. Um, I thought that the acting in it was fabulous and I just, I left there feeling all like just really kind of content and satisfied, you know, when you leave a cinema feeling that way, like, oh, that was time well spent, definitely. So I really enjoyed that one. And then Tar was one that I definitely did enjoy. Um, I haven't made a standalone movie review of this one um, because I saw it so recently, um, but I could, if you would like me to, let me know in comments. Um, and this one was very much like you're following one person and you're following their journey and you know that a lot has happened before the film. And so you as a reader are almost, uh, as a watcher, I'm always having to do what you do when you're a reader um because you're kind of having to do a little bit of like inference and comprehension to work out what's gone on before and why it's affected this um conductor so much um i thought it was a really kind of powerful film in many ways and yet quiet and understated in others i thought it struck that nice balance between the two um and like i say it was very good but should it have been nominated as Best Picture? I don't know. Was it like 
one of the best pictures I've seen this year. Probably not. Um, then we have Top Gun Maverick, which is a really interesting one. Um, I did have tickets to see this one in Dolby, and then the cinema was randomly closed when we got there, so I got a refund on them, um, and was really disappointed I wasn't able to, because I would have seen that in the exact same cinema as I saw the first Top Gun when it was like released as a special thing in Dolby, like post-COVID, it was obviously a little bit of a lull time. Um, and so <coughs> that would have been really good to see in the exact same cinema. And I know that like the playing sounds would have been amazing in Dolby and like the, the music in general and the score. Um, and this is another one where you kind of like left to make some inference of your own to work out what sort of happened before. Um, but I really don't get the whole Best Picture nomination. In my opinion, it was a nice enough film. It was fine. But it wasn't like, whoa, this was an amazing picture. It was just like, okay, it's a um, Tom Cruise movie. It's a follow-up to Top Gun. That's about it. Like, it was everything that you would expect. Then, a Triangle of Sadness. Wow, this was weird. This was, again... One that I was really excited to go and see. I love Woody Harrelson. I've got a review of his movie, New Movie Champions, coming up for you next week. Um, and so I was excited to see it. Was interested to see what the kind of take on, like, consumerism and, like, the whole, like, luxury cruise thing was going to be. Like, you know, it's marketed as people go on a luxury cruise and it goes wrong. Um, and, yeah, it was just really disappointing. I think it was almost kind of trying to do what the menu did, but I enjoyed the menu so much more, so much more, um, and it didn't get nominated for anything. Um, and this one, it was just kind of like, there was a bit at the beginning that kind of gave you a background to one pair of characters, and that was that. And then you kind of had to see the other characters as, um, they were kind of coming onto the cruise and, you know, getting their first night on the cruise and what have you. And they were all quite weird. Um, and yeah, then everything that does go, that could go wrong, does go wrong. And you get to see this kind of like Lord of the Flies-esque survival type of thing that was just really quite dark and quite uncomfortable. I think the fact that the film did make me uncomfortable was a good thing. Um, if, you know, if a film gives you any kind of big emotion, that's a good thing. But I'm, again, really struggling to see why it was nominated for an Oscar. And the only way I managed to see this was by paying to rent it on Amazon Prime because it just didn't seem to be out anywhere for me to be able to see it would have been interesting to know what it would have been like to watch this one uninterrupted on the big screen um, and then we have women talking which I have a book versus movie video coming up for you I think it's going to be the next bookish video you see um, because I did really enjoy the film um, but it again it was a good film along the lines of tar was a good film but why it's been nominated for an Oscar, I'm not sure. I'm very pleased to see that it's been nominated for screenplay because I think it did an amazing job of being kind of true to the book and it's the, you know, the direction and the writing, very, very good. Um, and the film was, was good, but there was points where I was like, well, but why do we need to see this as part of the story? I think there was, there was moments of that. So... I think probably the film that I would like like to see win the Oscar, like from a personal preference, it would be a tie between The Fablemans and Elvis. That's a personal preference kind of thing. Those were my two favourite films from the list. The film I think will win is Everything Everywhere All at Once because it's just the one that's just so buzzy at the minute. Um, but almost all of the films on this list, in my opinion, were just too long and were kind of pandering to that like we want to do this to get an Oscars nomination. So I'm going to go on to talk about the acting categories, the writing categories, the directing categories, and then the kind of special effects and hair and makeup. Um, so if you are leaving us here, 
um, do please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and please do let me know what your preferences and predictions are in the comments as we go along because um, I'm always interested to hear what other people have to say um, and yes that Oscars week uh, what's it playlist will be linked in the end screen if you didn't manage to click on it at the very beginning of the video so let's talk actors first of all we've got actor in a leading role we've got um, Austin Butler for Elvis, Colin Farrell for Banshees, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, um, Paul Mescal for After Sun and Bill Nighy for Living. Now Living is one of the only films on the list that I have not seen um, because again it was out for about a week in the cinemas, it was on during the day or like at nine o'clock at night neither of the times I'm going to be able to go and watch a film um, and so I haven't managed to watch it because it's only available for purchase right now on streaming um, and so not going to do that. Um, I would be really interested to watch it and see uh, but however not going to be able to talk about that one. All the rest I have seen. I have a standalone review of The Whale so I'll leave that linked up above for you um, but in my personal opinion the person who acted their socks off for this um, role was uh, Austin Butler I believe he won the Golden Globe for it and so I think it's quite a strong preference and prediction to say Austin Butler for this one um, but again let me know what you think and then actor in a supporting role we have Brendan Gleeson for Banshees Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway again I haven't seen Causeway but I've liked other things that I've seen him in um, then we've got Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans Barry um, Keon for The Banshees and Kihei Quan for everything everywhere all at once I mean it's really difficult isn't it because I think that Barry Keon um would be kind of the the front runner based on nominations and wins for other award ceremonies like the BAFTAs and the Golden Globes um I think he would be a good prediction but personally I didn't gel with banshees at all and so i really struggled to kind of isolate the performances and rate the performances i thought brendan gleason did a pretty good job of uh playing a very kind of unlikable character in banshees um but i think i would have to go with judd hirsch just because i love the fablemans so much and everything about all of the actors performances in the fablemans kind of made me feel something and gave me like warmth and hope and so that would be my personal choice but i think one of the banshees actors would probably win um then we have Actress in a leading role. We have Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anna de Arma for Blonde. Then we have Andrea Risborough for To Leslie, Michelle Williams for The Fableman, and Michelle um, Yo for Everything Ever All at Once. I think my prediction would probably be Michelle Yo for Everything Ever All at Once. But I think that any of these actresses, I think all of them did an amazing, amazing job. I think they all gave a really invested performance and I was kind of like impressed with all of their performances in all of their films um, and so I would be really happy to see any of them win even the fact that I didn't enjoy everything everywhere all at once I could see the um, like the good job that she was doing and um, kind of switching between all of these different kind of roles within the film within the different multiverses um, and so yeah that would be my prediction but I'd have to be happy if any of them won um, then supporting actresses we have Angela Bassett for Black Panther we have um, Hong Chow for The Whale we have Kerry Condon for The Banshees of Insurance, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once and Stephanie Sue for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now, I feel like um, <sighs> predictions wise, again, I think possibly Everything Everywhere All at Once would be a strong front runner. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis, again, gave a good performance um, and would be generally happy to see any of these win really hard to comment on the Banshees one because as I say really sort of difficult to kind of separate the performance from my non-enjoyment of the film um but I think that um Hong Chow for The Whale I think her just her performance was fabulous and she's been in so many things recently she's like the actress du jour um and I think that her performance in this was a kind of 
balm to the really like negative depressing side of the film I thought that she brought in some kind of like warmth and passion and um like humor almost just like friendliness to the like depressing stark apathy of the rest of the film um and so personally uh she would be my pick but again I think that all of these actresses did a really good job in their role um so let's switch directions a little bit and talk animated feature film um now we have pinocchio um we have marcel the shell with shoes on we have puss in boots the last wish we have the sea beast and we have turning red now out of these um i saw puss in boots the last wish and marcel the shell with shoes on in cinemas because pinocchio and sea beast were straight to Netflix and Turning Red was straight to Disney Plus even though it was trailered in cinemas as coming to cinemas. Um, my review of Turning Red I feel like was a million years ago but I'll leave it linked up above for you. Um, I personally thought that Puss in Boots The Last Wish was really scary for a children's film and <coughs> I can see why it's been nominated because DreamWorks have done some interesting things with animation to kind of like make it a little bit different and make it not just look like the other films in the Shrek franchise um and then um Pinocchio is obviously you watch it and you're like this is an like Oscar darling type of film and obviously Guillermo del Toro won for Shape of Water and you know he's he's a big name he's a big kind of player in this game um but I just absolutely adored Marcel the Shell with Shoes on and I just thought it was a gorgeous film it was obviously it is animated but it's like an adult animation it's like a documentary it's a really nice length of film as well like I went and watched it and got home and it was still like not time for bed it was really good um and I would watch that again and again. I think having watched all of these, I would probably not re-watch any of them apart from Marcel the Shell with Shoes on. Now, historically, obviously, Guillermo del Toro has been a big player in Oscars, but Pixar is also a massive player at the Oscars. And so they've won for animated shorts, they've won for songs, and they've won for other animations. And so it could be the case that this film is going to win big as well. However, it was quite controversial. And I think quite a lot of people felt like me that it should have been released in cinemas and it was chosen to be released to Disney+. Plus. Could that be its downfall? So my prediction would maybe be that Pinocchio is going to win. My personal choice would be that Marcel the Shell with Shoes on wins because I loved it and I thought it was amazing. And it did really different things compared to these didn't gel with Puss in Boots, didn't gel with the Sea Beast, and Turning Red, I think, would be a solid choice as well. Um, then, let's just go down the Oscars list. We'll go for Cinematography, all quite on the Western Front. Bardot, False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. Um, now, I think that any of these I thought that the cinematography was fairly impressive the one the only one that really surprises me on here is Tar because I feel like it was so kind of like close up following one person and sort of following her through everyday life it's an interesting choice because it's not big and bold like the cinematography in All Quiet on the Western Front um I thought The Empire of Light was really a really beautiful film and I'm surprised that it didn't get nominated for more Oscars. I think the fact that it's just cinematography is quite odd in a way, but then it was maybe long listed for a lot of other things and it just ended up being this one category. Um, I just think, harking back to Elvis, like I remember talking specifically about the cinematography when we saw the film and so it would be my pick. Um, my personal pick, however, in terms of what I think will probably win, would be All Quiet on the Western Front. The fact that there's a whole making of documentary on Netflix that it prompts you to watch immediately after having watched the film, a bit like with Pinocchio, I think shows that it's it's an important thing in terms of the actual filmmaking. But my personal pick would be Elvis. Um, then costume design. We have Babylon. We have Black Panther. We have Elvis. We have Everything Everywhere all at once and we have Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. 
a lovely, lovely film. Um, and I'm glad it's got a little Oscar nomination, if it's even if it's only for costume design. Now, I came out of Elvis saying, I think that the costumes were superb. I think that they were wonderful. I think that they did an amazing job. And so I think that would be my pick and my prediction, because I think it could very, very easily, very well win in this category um however black panther wakanda forever the costumes are very very impressive like there's obviously a lot of thought and design and money gone into those costumes and kind of they are so pivotal to moments in the film so i think that would also be a very worthy winner um however again I came out of babylon another really long film thinking that it would get more oscar nominations and so I do think it deserves to be talked about here because the costumes in this one were really excellent as well in in a line with Elvis. Um, but I think my pick and my prediction for this cost category, costume design category, would be Elvis. Then we need to talk about Best Director. I've already kind of touched on this a little bit. We have Banshees of Inishirin. We have Everything Everywhere All at Once. We have The Fablemans. We have Tar. We have Triangle of Sadness. Um it's an interesting one i think that probably banshees or everything everywhere all at once will win um just because they have been sweeping other award shows um however my pick would be the fable ones because again i feel like the kind of the way it was shot and the way things like literally were directed i think that they added to that like feel good nature of the film and added to that like beauty of the film and added to my enjoyment of the film as well um and i could kind of yeah really like gel with it because of the direction but as I say, my predictions would be Banshees or Everything Everywhere All at Once. Then we have film editing, um, quite similar to cinematography and directing that we've talked about, but a different skill. We have Banshees, we have Elvis, we have Everything Everywhere All at Once, we have Tar, and we have Top Gun Maverick. Um, again, I think sort of similar to my directing predictions it could be banshees it could be everything everywhere all at once in terms of editing i could appreciate that the editing that had gone into everything everywhere all at once um i'm not really sure why tar has been nominated in this category um but yeah my prediction would definitely be everything everywhere all at once um and yeah not really sure why top gun mavericks in here either i think because obviously reading up on the film all of the stunts were so like shot by the characters and like not filmed on green screen and not filmed in a studio and not done by stunt performers. It was like they took cameras into those planes themselves and they kind of filmed. And so the editing must have been fairly difficult because there was so much footage to edit together. Um, so I can kind of see why that's been been nominated, but Tar, not really sure about. Um, but yeah, my prediction would be everything ever all at once for this one. We'll have to uh, take this video and look at it together with the actual winners. Then we have makeup and hairstyling. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis and The Whale. Obviously, the makeup and hairstyling in The Whale has to be talked about because of the prosthetics that Brendan Fraser wore um, and the kind of like the the way he was made out to be the kind of the decline in his health was shown so much through the makeup and the kind of perspiration that they had to show in his his hair and his feet and his hands as much as anything i think that the makeup and hair styling on there was very good however i would have to pick elvis for this one because i thought it was just so fantastic and um the way tom hanks was made up and the way elvis was made up and it was just so believable and so true to um kind of pictures that we've seen of the two of them and the kind of pictures that you get to see at the end of the film so that would be my pick and my prediction would be elvis um then we have original score now for these these categories with original score and original song i'm always like well did i notice them that's that's always a big thing for me is whether i actually notice the score in the song um so we have all quiet on the western front babylon 
Banshees, everything everywhere all at once and the Fablemans. Now I remember the music from Babylon um, and so that would be my personal pick because I felt like the music from Babylon added to each scene, added to the level of discomfort or added to the level of like wildness that was going on in each scene and so that would be my pick. Didn't notice any music in All Quiet on the Western Front or Banshees um, and then the other two it was just kind of a like not really a very noticeable thing for me so I can't really comment on a prediction for this one because I just have to go with the one that I actually noticed and I actually remembered which would be Babylon. Then we have original song, we have um, applause from Tell It Like A Woman which I have not seen, we have Hold My Hand from um, Top Gun Maverick which is Lady Gaga which I thought was superb. We have Lift Me Up from Black Panther, which definitely added to the feeling of the film. We have uh, Natu Natu from RRR, which I have not seen. And then we have This Is A Life from Everything Everywhere All At Once, which I did not notice. So I think my pick for this one might be um, Hold My Hand from uh, uh, Top Gun Maverick by Lady Gaga. Um, and I think because she has won an Oscar before, I think that this one is potentially also my prediction as well as my pick. Um, then very quickly, we have production design, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis and the Fablemans. Um, I think that noticeably all of these had very good production design. I think the prediction would probably be All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, I think my pick would probably be Elvis or Babylon because I thought that pr the production design on Babylon was excellent. Um then sound, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, Top Gun Maverick. As I say, I would have liked to have seen Top Gun Maverick in the Dolby Theatre because I think the sound would have been spectacular. Um, I thought that the sound in um, Avatar was really good as well. There was definitely um, moments where it was like very quiet apart from a sort of background sound. There were like war moments and underwater moments that were like the sound was really, really believable and really true to um, effect. I think the All Quiet on the Western Front um, was the sound was okay. Um, so I think that my prediction would potentially be Top Gun or Elvis. Um, then we have visual effects. We have all Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar Way of Water, Batman, Black Panther and Top Gun. I thought the visual effects in Black Panther were good. I thought the visual effects in Top Gun were good. But my pick for this one would definitely, my pick and my prediction I think, would be Avatar Way of Water because I came out of there going, okay, those special effects were excellent. Um, just the fact that you've got like Sigourney Weaver not looking anything like Sigourney Weaver was just incredible. Um, and so that there's only really one pick in there for me. Um, then we have Adaptive Screenplay, which I have already touched on as well. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion and Eyes Out Mystery, Living, which as I say, I have not seen, unfortunately, Top Gun Maverick and Women Talking. My pick for this one would be Women Talking. And I would really, 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 really hope that this one would get it because I feel quite passionate about how good the adaptation as a screenplay was based around the book, having read the book as well. Um, not sure. I, I read that even the people at Top Gun Maverick, I read that even they were surprised by their nomination for this one. Can't comment on Living, really didn't enjoy Glass Onion. Um, and All Quiet on the Western Front is interesting because obviously it's adapted from the original version of this film, which I haven't seen, so I can't really comment on it. I really want Women Talking to win for this one. And I really hope that they do. It's one that I do feel very passionately about. And then finally, we have original screenplay. Banshees of Insurance, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fableman's Tar and Triangle of Sadness. Um, in terms of like a story and it just being like taking you through and the writing being impressive, I really, really enjoyed The Fableman's. Like that would definitely be my pick. But I think in terms of my prediction as to who will win, I think it'll be everywhere, Everything Everywhere All at Once or Banshees because they just seem to be sweeping the awards for this one. And so I think people will think, oh, this is a cleverly written film and I can appreciate like where the writing has gone into it um, but just for me as a viewer I didn't enjoy the stories of those as much as I enjoyed the story told through the Fablemans, told through the writing of that one. 
Um, and there you have it. We're finally at the end of this mammoth video. I know in previous years I haven't, I've made separate videos for each category, but I don't feel like because I just don't have the access to the films as readily available in this country as I did when I was living in Denver, lucky me. Um, I can talk about each category as separately. I've had to go to quite a lot of effort, like go to different cities, pay to download things. Like I've gone to a lot of places to make sure I've watched all of these films. Um, and so I don't feel like I need to doubt it, like split it up in separate videos. I think Best Picture was the one that most people were here for anyway, right? Um, so let me know in comments, will you be watching the Oscars tonight? Um, have you made predictions? What do you think of the nominations? Do you agree with any of my predictions? Um, please do let me know. I'm always very interested to hear what other people have to say about the nominations and about the Oscars. Um, if you enjoyed this video, do give a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed because as I say, that um, women talking book versus movie video will be coming your way very soon and hit that notification bell to be notified when i post next week's movie review video um and uh yes if you have made it this far thank you so much for watching i will see you with my next video